guys, Dave here for the Reptile Channel Herpers TV. You know, with this segment, Hobby Breeders, I usually focus on people that are breeding reptiles, but there's so much more to keeping reptiles. And here at Bill Stewart's, he has one of the most unique, varied collection, and he has reptiles just for the sake of loving reptiles. So let's go check out Bill Stewart's reptile collection here on Rainbow Mealworms Presents the Reptile Channel Herpers TV. All right. All right, you ready? What is behind the lots mystery of, door? Lots of wonderful goodies here, Dave. Um, oh, wow, look at this place. <laughs> thanks. The collection's been downsized quite a bit, so I don't have quite the animals that I used to, but I have the animals that I really want to work with and the animals that I've been focusing on now. Um, so yeah, let's see what I got. I got some oddball, yeah, definitely. Mostly I got some oddball species. Um, I always like working with the more unique animals, with more of the oddball stuff, the stuff you don't commonly see all the time. Well, that's why I wanted to get over here and see this. Yeah, yeah. So, Look you know, this. I do have some common animals, a lot of animals that were donated to me or surrendered to the Herb Society, and I've kept them as pets or I've used them for educational pieces. These guys are in here for, uh, they're outside during the summertime and they're inside for the winter, so. These are uh, Madagascar oh. water skinks. These guys are a really unique species. Uh, they've actually been observed, observed in the wild eating uh, on small crabs. Uh, they do eat snails, they eat crustaceans and stuff. They uh, spend a lot of time, they're semi-aquatic, but they do spend a lot of time in the water. Yeah, they're called water skinks. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty unique. These are one of my newer animals I just added to the collection. I think these are so underrated. Yeah, I agree. I um, And again, I have an affinity towards the more underappreciated animals, so to speak. It's probably hard to guess, but how many species do you have in here? Um, how many species do I have? And you know, I cut down. Um, around the same time last year, I, I had over 100 animals with over 70 different species. Wow. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm at the forefront of this. I'm a collector and I'm a hobbyist. And so, you know, I do education with the Herb Society. I have a group of animals that I bring out into the public and we do shows. Um, I love volunteering with the Herb Society, it's, a, it's an incredible experience. Um, I do breed, but my intention isn't to breed, it's not my priority. I just, I love these animals, I think they're incredible. Dave, this is one of my favorite gecko species. This is uh, Strophirus tanicata. Uh, the common name is the yellow tail gecko, <laughs> but it doesn't really give them much credit. They have extremely gorgeous red eyes, their, their patterns are just unbelievable. He's definitely active today, but uh, just a uh, just a gorgeous animal, just wow. a beautiful gecko. That is nice. Thanks, dude. All right, so you got three swimming pools on the floor of your yeah, room. Yeah, these guys are inside for the winter. They'll go back outside in the summertime. So, besides the animals that I kind of collect and breed, I am an active member of the Madison Area Herpetological Society. And being a member of the society, we have animals that are surrender to us. We have animals that are donated to us to use for educational purposes. Uh, this, you know, a lot of these tortoises were rescues. Uh, my beautiful fiance has taken in some of these animals as well. So we have uh, our collection of box turtles down here. We have a uh, Eastern, we have uh, some three toed. You know, sometimes they come to us in good shape. Sometimes they come to us and they're a little uh, less in good shape and we, you know, really try to work with them and, and bring them back up to health. Most of the animals are, you know, observed by veterinarians and so we, you know, make sure that they're healthy. Pancake tortoise. Oh yeah. Pancake tortoises are my, uh, you know, yeah. if, if there's a couple of tortoise species that I really want to work with and pancakes are one of them. Yeah, they are awesome. They're really cool. They really are. Yeah, it's just another cool animal to add to the collection. That's it's fun right. to bring to shows, Herb Society events. Too bad they're not very good musicians because they're always flat. Oh, dang it. Oh, man. But I can't believe it. <laughs> Video <laughs> over. <laughs> All right. And who's this big guy here? That's Carl. Carl was also gifted to me uh, by a dear friend of mine. I have no idea how old Carl is. I will have to find out. But uh, he's been with me for almost a year now. You know, I just, I like having a diverse collection. I like working with different things. Chunk is my uh, redfoot tortoise. He was surrendered to the Herb Society a few years back and I took him in and I act adopted him and he stays with me now and he comes with me to Herb Society events and he wins a lot of hearts over. <laughs> he's, a, he's a cool dude. Tortoises have kind of more complex dietary needs and um, 
they can be a little bit more forgiving and a little bit more resilient with temperature changes and stuff, but you know, if their diets aren't proper, they can have calcium deficiencies, they can have pyramiding, um, vitamin A deficiencies, they get ear infections and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, they're a little bit more of a challenging animal to keep healthy. Right. And so anytime they're surrendered to the Herb Society, a lot of times they seem to have some type of underlying medical issue or you could see the visible pyramiding on their shells. Chunk isn't too bad, uh, but I've definitely seen some rougher red foots come through the Herb Society. Well, he doesn't look too bad to me. No, and he's he's active and he's alert and uh, he's a champ. These are my green oh, tree, yeah. uh, emerald tree skinks. Oh, those are fantastic. Yes, and this actually is a breeding pair. Um, she's looking like she might be a little gravid there too, so I gotta keep my eye out. Um, this is a species where if I do find eggs, I wanna pull them out right away. The males have been known to eat the eggs. Right. Um, but she's looking a little chunky. I've always been into geckos, but I'm evolving into skinks slowly. Skinks are one of my favorite lizards. Yeah, they are very cool. Oh, those are awesome. Man. Yeah, thank you. Those are so just cool. awesome. Look at that guy. So underrated. I mean, all of these guys you have in here are so underrated. Thank you. Yeah, I, I always enjoy the oddball species. I tend to gravitate towards those when I go to shows. Who's got something that you don't see all the time? Exactly. Who's got the, Who's got the weird stuff that he only maybe has one or two of, and everyone's looking for crested geckos and bearded dragons. That's right. I'm you know, always trying to find the goofball species. You know, again, I love going to a reptile shows. They're my favorite thing, and you can see all of the things that you gravitate towards. There's the bearded dragons, and the you know boas are becoming really huge now, and they're bred, and there's different morphs of those. Ball pythons, crested geckos, and those animals are incredible, and they're beautiful. Um, I always gravitate towards the the more unique things, the more odd things, the ones that, you know, don't get a lot of the attention that they deserve. I mean, there are some really cool species of gecko that are, that, you know, they adapt very well to captivity or they're, they're you know, they're, they are being bred in captivity and they don't get quite the attention that they deserve. And I always, that's, that's where I like to, that's where I like to swim in that side of the pool. <laughs> this is uh, Abenavia inunguis. They're called the Madagascar clawless gecko. They are, uh, such a cool little species. So this is an adult. Um, I have a couple pairs of these. I'm hoping to get eggs, but the eggs are like the size of Tic Tacs. They're super tiny. But yeah, just another unique species. You see them a little bit here and there in collections, but they're not quite as popular as they should be, I think. They're yeah, just a look completely at amazing little thing. Yeah, so this species, something that's cool about these guys is um, this is actually a regenerated tail. Um, they're one of the only gecko species that uh, their regenerated tails are usually cooler than their original tails. Yeah. Usually they can fire up and become like a bright orange. They're pretty neat. That is a cool little gecko. Yeah. Yeah, they, um, for being a micro gecko species, they're a little more docile. They're, you can handle them a little bit more. Okay, quick, this was perfect. So these are Heteronosia benoi, and they are a parth uh, parthogenic species of animal. They're more of a, an arid species. So they're all female, they lay fertile eggs. And it's so awesome that you're taping here because there's a baby. Oh, I gotta check this out. In the cage. It looks like the adults tried oh. to kind of get at her a little bit because she's missing her tail already. Look but that. look at that. Dude. I haven't been able to find eggs for these. And um, I've been looking for eggs and I haven't come across any. So obviously they hit an egg somewhere. My fiance Aaron and I have been kind of enamored with blue tongue skinks lately. I've got a group of Maruk. Maruke? Maruk? Maruki. Maruki. Because it Maruki. comes from the, the province or the region of Indonesia where these guys are native to. Okay, so I think so it's Maruki. It would be Maruki. I have two males and two females. Uh, my fiance has a couple northerns as well and a Key Island. Uh, we're looking for a mate for her male Key Island. Um, this, this is definitely an animal I want to work with and an animal that I kind of want to intentionally breed. The babies are adorable. Uh, this girl in particular, uh, the day before Halloween, had a small group of babies born. We had six six baby Marukis uh, that were born the day before Halloween. Two of them didn't make it, but we have four of them that are thriving. They've already doubled in size. And they're just incredible animals. They're really personable, they're really quirky. So um, awesome. You know, they, they definitely are taking off in the pet trade. I agree. You know, I mean, I don't have any fancy morphs or any Thing cool. I just like the regular old Marukis, the regular old blue tongues. Look at this guy. Yeah, I really like skinks. So, did you brumate your blue tongues here to get them to breed, or I did not brumate them this time, and I actually had all four of them together 
for a couple months and then I separated them all again. And then they just went. And um, they just they just went. So she was the lucky mama right here. All right, so this little guy right here, that is, where are we now? So December, so that is less than a two month old baby. Yeah. That is a giant baby. Yeah, um, Phoebe's a really good eater. <laughs> So we had six baby skinks born the day before Halloween and uh, two of them just didn't make it They uh, just failed to thrive. Uh, we tried everything we could but the four of them that we still have are absolute eating machines wow. um, They eat a couple times a day. This is Phoebe. She's I love the name. Um, <laughs> she's constantly chowing um, and like she's they've doubled in size in just a couple of months. It's crazy. That is a big skin. So we're gonna hang on to them for a little bit longer And then they all have homes that they're gonna go to I always appreciate the wild type of the animal and I, I you know I I do have some albinos I do have some different morphs of different things But most of what I have is the wild type representation of that animal That's awesome. because I that's just where my heart is, you know, and no offense to anybody who breeds animals I you know, I think it's incredible, you know, the genetics of different species in captivity, it just blows my mind. It's incredible. Um, I just, my affinity and you know my passion is more towards the the wild type of the animal. Why not? So, you know. So all right, I see like one of my favorite snakes right here. Um, he's an eastern indigo snake, and he's 10 years old. But as you will notice when I get him out. He's <laughs> 10 years old, he should be 68 feet. Yeah, he's only about two Look. feet. <laughs> <laughs> he's, um, he's a runt. His, um, he, was ha he was captive hatched and he was hatched in the clutch where all the other snakes grew to be their normal size. He's just a little, a little goofball. I've heard from some breeders that there is, you know, in captive breeding there can be some runting that happens. Um, he's perfectly healthy, he's an eating machine. Uh, he just maintains a smaller length. I mean, he's even got the girth of a, you know, six or eight foot indigo snake. Yeah, but I mean, he's he, just... he is plenty girthy. Yeah, he's got a little stuck shit on his tummy. He's got that classic kind of, you know, diamond yeah. shape. And... He eats a variety, I mean, I feed him frozen thawed rats, frozen thawed mice, he'll eat tilapia fillets, he'll take, um, you know, small chicks or quail I've given to him before. He's a, he's a fantastic, fantastic snake. He's really one of like the gems of my collection and I really, that's if I was only that. allowed to have one snake, it would be the Eastern Indigo right, Snake. Right, they are right. my favorite snake of all time. Well, yeah, I think everybody has a snake in their collection that's the, their favorite. So if you guys have a snake in your collection that's your favorite, comment below. Tell us what it is and why it's your favorite. So he's, besides this boa constrictor that I have, he's the only other snake I have now after the house was broken into. Yeah. Most of my other snakes were stolen. Yeah, so uh, that just happened. So tell us, tell us what happened. So I'm in the process of a move. Um, I'm moving out of my house. I'm moving into uh, an apartment, but all my reptiles were still at the house. A lot of my stuff was still at the house because I haven't officially 100% moved yet. And um, I went to the house uh, Wednesday morning. I show up to the house every day. I go there every night. I make sure the animals are taken care of. I make sure the house is locked up. And uh, I went there Wednesday morning and I noticed things were off right away when I got there. Uh, the kitchen door was left wide open. And as I made my way downstairs where my reptiles were, I saw my Greek tortoise missing. And then it started to sink in that something was up. I uh, saw a few of my exos were open. My exoterra doors were wide open. The decor was hanging out. And that's when it all kind of hit me. I kind of had a mild panic attack. But overall, I'm missing about 25 animals. Uh, my black and white tegu Toby is missing. My bearded one of my bearded dragons was missing. My Greek tortoise. I'm missing um, 15, 16 geckos. A couple of my Pac-Man frogs. And it was all the animals that I used for the Herp Society. And that's what you know? I was just going to ask you because you told me that they were like leopard geckos and things that people have seen outside your house. Probably, you know. I mean, I I'm going in all sorts of different things over my head. Um, but yeah, it was the animals that are, you know, they're more commonly known by people and they're more recognizable maybe, yeah. but they're also, you know, they're the ones that I was in the public with. My Tegu, hundreds and hundreds <sighs> of kids and adults have, you know, interacted with him and pet him and learned about animals through him. And, you know, I have a bunch of kids holding, you know, a couple of ball pythons that I had and the corn snake that I had. The animals that I had for the, you know, they were my pets, but they had them for the purpose of education, yeah. the purpose of, 
you know, being in the community and being at these events. And you know, one of my one of my favorite things that I do is is taking a group of my animals and going to a a school assembly at a, at a you know even a middle school or a high school. I've done events with uh, at senior citizens' homes. I've worked with kids with special needs. I mean, my animals were you know pet by kids on the autism spectrum that weren't verbal. And you know, I've reached out to so many different people who don't live with these animals every day. And it's it was such a it's a, such a special part of my life to be able to do that. And so it's it's really upsetting that that those animals absolutely. Were taken. Um, that being said, the amazing support from the reptile community, I can't even thank everybody enough. It's my fiance made a post, and that post on Facebook was shared over 2,000 times. Um, I've been contacted by Kenosha News. I've been contacted by Milwaukee. They did a couple spots. So I mean, even non-reptile people are taking this rather seriously, and I'm impressed. You know, when I first called 911. <laughs> Yeah, my reptiles are stolen. I thought they were going to hang up on me. Right, right. You know, they stole some reptiles from my house, but they didn't. I mean, they took it very seriously, and I'm, I'm ever that so is thankful fantastic. just to be a part of this reptile community. And I know we have some quorums here and there, and there's some Facebook beef about this person yeah, does this, yeah. and natural substrate, and paper right, towel. Right, right. But when it's all said and done, we care about these animals, we care about their well-being, and we really are a a family for all intents and purposes. I agree. And I'm, I agree. I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of it. I love it.